Hello world, welcome to LTS, my name is Steve. Today I'll be reviewing the video titled, How Steve Harvey Prays. But before I begin, I ask that if you like this video and channel, to please not forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So, all that being said, here we go. I'm Steve Harvey, stand-up comedian, entertainer, television host, family man. But most importantly, I happen to be a man of faith. I wanted to do this video to demonstrate how easy it is to get lost in ideologies of the world today that conflate success with Christianity and that conflates the idea that it's possible for multiple faiths to be correct at the same time. You see, as Christians and non-Christians alike, we have to ask ourselves the important question of, is this true? Because it's not just simply disagreeing with someone. This is talking about where a person is placing their faith, which is is one of the most important questions that we each have to answer because it's not just going to affect how we live in this life but it's also going to determine where we'll be spending our afterlife as well an endless existence where we'll either be rejoicing or lamenting the choice that we made why did you not lose faith as you became more successful? If I could make myself successful, I would have done it a long time ago. I would have skipped so many of the lessons I had to learn. But it's not that. Success and happiness is a process, man. And in this process, I was very aware of the amount of faith that was needed. And as a matter of fact, it really took more faith than I even thought I had. Everything that Steve is saying sounds good, and that being the case, it would be easy to overlook some of the glaring issues here. But there are two major problems here that come into play when he's asked about his faith. The first is that he immediately talks about his journey to success, which isn't surprising because it's a common staple of Mr. Harvey. If you want to be happy or successful, you got to ask God for it. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for it. The scripture says you have not because you ask not. It's a very simple scripture. If you change what you ask God for, he immediately changes what he gives to you. That's not entirely accurate. The passage of scripture that he's referring to is found in James chapter 4 where it says, You do not have because you do not ask God. But if we zoom out to just the verses surrounding this passage of scripture, we get a vastly different picture where it says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you you want so you quarrel and fight you do not have because you do not ask God when you ask you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures well that sort of changed things and so if we read this passage within the context of the chapter we can clearly see that the Bible is not promising us that God is just going to give us our every wish just because we ask in fact, if we read on, we can clearly see that this chapter is telling us the opposites. In James chapter 4 verses 7 it says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So a person's faith and a person's success are not inherently interchangeable. If that were the case, then when Jesus walked this earth, he and his trusted disciples, excluding Judas of course, would have been rich. But they weren't. Many of them were poor. And all except one died horrible deaths. Because they knew that serving Christ was more important than anything else in this life. And I'm obviously not saying that God will not bless someone with success. And if that happens, that's great. But the takeaway from this chapter is that submitting ourselves to Christ has to be the priority. Which then leads us to the second problem where he talks about his faith because he's not stating who he's placed his faith in. That's messed up! Which is kind of important because we live in a fallen world that's full of distractions. So if Christ is who we serve, we have to be bold enough to say so because only in him is it safe to place our faith. See, oftentimes people who are religious think their religion is right and everybody else is wrong. There is only one way to God. But Steve's faith is unique because it's really not about that. 
What he's saying here is a self-defeating statement because while he's spouting out that religious people believe that their view is right and everyone else's view is wrong, He's essentially doing the exact same thing because by believing what he believes, he has a worldview that says that anyone who doesn't think like he does is wrong, which is what happens to everyone because everyone has a worldview, religious or not. No one can escape that and if someone says that they can, they're not being honest with themselves. There's no one, one way to heaven, no one way to paradise. It's like television. Now it's over 800 channels of cable. And they're all pretty entertaining. So I'm pretty sure, man, that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. And cause somebody watching another channel or taking another channel than you, they still getting entertained and they probably still getting to heaven. What? What are you talking about? What he's saying here is problematic because it's simply not true. Jesus says in John chapter 14 verses 6, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so I find it strange that he would compare a person's salvation to someone being entertained by different TV channels. But when I thought about it some more, I realized that this sheds light on where the problem lies. You see, early on when he was asked about his faith, his first response was about his success. And now he's comparing salvation to that of people being entertained watching different TV channels. So just going off these answers, it appears that he doesn't understand what faith means. Alright boys, let's get back to basics. If we look up the definition of the word faith, one of the definitions for it is belief and trust in and loyalty to God. So if we take that definition and we apply it to Steve Harvey's career, when it comes to his books, TV shows, and even his jokes. Who has his loyalty been to? God or his success? And I'm obviously not saying that there's anything wrong with being successful. I'm just saying that when it comes to the things that Steve is saying, it appears that he just views faith as a means to an end. And when it comes to God, it can't be about me or you or anyone else. It has to always be about him. The next part of the video, he discusses the naming of his sons. In that, he gave one of his sons a Muslim name. But then he says something that I found to be confusing when he said, I named him Ali because I knew, I knew then. That he I might knew. be different. I knew. And you have no problems with it. No. Because when you come here, you understand Islam is a religion of peace. Why you got a problem with peace? I think that he's trying to use his son's name to make a grander point that ultimately doesn't work because he's not really explaining what he knew unless there's something I'm missing and since I don't really know what he's trying to say here I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. This mosque in Abu Dhabi belongs to people in the Islamic faith, but as a sign of tolerance to the churches next to them, they renamed the mosque to Mary, Mother of Jesus Mosque. A mosque with the name Jesus on it. The world could use a little bit more of that. That doesn't make sense. There's an old saying that I feel is applicable here that says that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I'm going to go ahead and let the last part of this video play out and then I'll delve into what I mean. And it's not just about Christians and Muslims. It's about Christians, Muslims, Jews, and everybody else. At a time when religious intolerance is on the rise, we need many, many more of these mosques, many, many more of people like Steve. Before we continue, I think it's important that we define the word respect, which is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Seems easy enough. And so if we apply that to what he and Steve are saying, not only here, but during the entire video, it seems as though they're conflating faith, success, tolerance, and respect to mean the same thing, but they're not. <laughs> 
Of course not. I mean, I'm sure that everyone can agree that there are plenty of things to respect in the Muslim faith and just about every other faith. And when it comes to Muslims, I can honestly say that every Muslim that I've personally met in my life have been some of the most down-to-earth people, and in that they have my respect. But all that being said, when it comes to the Muslim faith, as a Christian, I'm not going to be incorporating the Muslim ideology or lifestyle into my daily life because the Muslim faith regards Jesus Christ as merely another prophet. But as a Christian, I believe that Jesus is the son of the living God, and only through him are we able to be saved. And me saying anything less than that is dishonoring my savior. It's just something I'm not going to do. So in conclusion, I want it to be known that I'm genuinely happy that Steve Harvey has found success. I mean, I've seen him in passing for years, trying to make it big, so I'm glad that he can make it. But that success is not faith, unless he's made the unfortunate mistake of making his success and fame be his God. Which would really be a shame, because success and fame in this life, compared to the vastness of eternity, is nothing because success fades. I mean, when he dies, everything that he has will go to something else or someone else. Which is kind of sad if you think about it. So many of the things mentioned in this video are kind of confusing. Even the title, How Steve Harvey Prays, doesn't quite make much sense because this video doesn't actually show us how he prays or really what he believes in. I mean, he'll talk about Jesus while uplifting the Muslim faith faith and you can't have it both ways. And when it comes to this video, I understand what they're trying to do. And on paper, this sounds good and inclusive. But at the end of the day, it's just asking people to stand for nothing. And in the light of the eternity that's coming, we have to know who we serve. And so with that being said, we come to the end of another video. I release a new video every month, so I'll see you then. But before I go, I ask that if you like this video and channel, to please not forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time, I pray God's blessing on you and that you always seek him first. Seems easy enough.